everybody, I am The Last Raider. We are back. And today, if you saw the, the picture on in the front, I had uh, all... <laughs> I kind of put an interesting thumbnail up, which is going to be uh, the Circle of Diversity. <clears throat> For those of you who haven't seen it, uh, you know, the Circle of Diversity just shows how SJWs and these crazy leftists come in. They're like, oh, we demand to be in your space. We now demand your space be more inclusive. Uh, we now ask for you to leave this space now because you're offending people that we've asked to come in and we're going to take over your space and then you go make a new space and then it's, okay, now we demand to be in your space again. And it's just, these people are parasites. Um, uh, actually, the uh, just some guy actually... Uh, stated the very same thing that I stated several months ago when I first started this channel, which was SJWs are like the Borg. He's, I don't think it's because that some guy has seen any of my videos. I don't think he watches. But the thing is, it's such a novel, it's a concept that anyone can get. It's a comparison that's just easy to, to draw if anyone has seen what you've seen in comics and seen in entertainment and seen in manga and seen in video games and seen in movies, you quickly begin to draw the conclusion between the two of them because this is exactly how the SJWs operate. They are the Borg. They go in, they have to assimilate everything. And then before you know it, your uh, characters, your heroes, are just a rainbowed, ver or rainbowed diversity, blackwashed or darkwashed version of the hero that used to be there. Sometimes they're, sometimes they're turned into drag queens. Sometimes they're just made gay. Sometimes they're, uh, uh, race swapped or gender swapped. And you end up with this whole, uh, which just, it looks almost alien. They are still wearing the same. It's, it's kind of like Picard. He's, he's wearing Locutus. He's wearing Picard's face, but it's not Picard underneath. It, it takes so something special to kind of break that through. You'll see it every so often. And that's what's happening here. We're at the point of we demand to be in your space. Okay. Uh, this is where we're at. Um, and this comes from the gamer. Why we think Sonic should and will be gay. Sonic the Hedgehog has a history of romance, though he's never been all that interested in women. Instead, Sonic should become an LGBTQ icon. Why? Uh, has nothing to do with the story. I can promise you that much. What it has to do with, and uh, this is a subject that Richard C. Myers, who has done Jawbreakers, highly successful comic book series, Iron Sights, highly successful jaw, uh, comic book series, one of the first major indie comic book writers who went out there and used the internet and YouTube to make, I mean, he, he pretty much, he, Myers has created the business model that a lot of people who want to get into comics now are or, and don't want to go through the big two or can't because they're they're not the right people okay they're they're not the right individuals um he created the entire business model of using youtube and the internet to create comic books and has been wildly successful in fact he has been far his comic book series in single issues uh or at least in graphic novel form have sold better than most several of marvel's flagship combined okay it's, it's very good uh him and and, and ethan van skyver came out and then many others came out started putting out books to start seeing how much money they can make ethan van skyver i think currently holds the record for the law for the most successful comic book campaign uh probably more successful than what marvel has put out in a long time uh, he's beaten the big two with just a single comic book and just sales um <clears throat> but as usual what Myers always stated was, he said, SJWs and these these types of leftist people, uh, they don't go after entertainment because, or popular forms of entertainment, because, um, because it makes money. They go after it for influence. They're not after power or money. They're after influence. And what they want, um, basically a lot of them are somewhat communist. And they want these forms of entertainment because they know that when it comes down to voting, yeah, you may not win the battle today voting, but you can win it tomorrow with the next generation. 
And that's how a lot of communism and, and all this other nonsense, socialism and everything else, it's, it's how those types of systems work when they try to take over a country. Um, what they'll do is they'll try to influence the younger generation. You can see this in high schools now with the curriculum that's being taught. You can see uh, colleges, especially with what's going on in colleges. Uh, people are, you've got these uh, college students going in there and when they come out, they hate America. They hate white people in general. Um, truth be told, they're mostly a bunch of segregationists, but they don't want to tell everyone. They, they don't want everyone to believe it. They have white guilt, which is they're guilty of being white, even though their mom and dad probably came from trailer tra trash and did everything they could to get them to college. Now suddenly mom and dad who did all these sacrifices, they're horrible people now. Because, oh my God, they were, because simply they're white. They they took something. They're, apparently they got white privilege, even though mom and dad lived in a trailer house and scraped and scrounged and, and did everything they could to put the kid to that re-education camp in the first place of what happened over there. And that's what college is. It's a scam and a re-education camp, folks. Okay? You're going to go in there and get something out of college, figure out what classes you absolutely need, and then hyper-focus on only those classes and don't listen to anyone that tells you you need anything else. Okay? There's no point going to any of these women's studies classes or sensitivity classes that they may have, though they're whatever the heck they have. But the reason we're after this is because Birds of Prey came out and it was a feminist movie and it bombed. Okay? Uh, flopped hard. I mean, it was a belly flop. Uh, it, it was one of those belly flops that Harley Quinn came out red faced, red stomached, and red under her. Well, whatever skin hit the water first, that's what was ended up being like bright red. So what happens next is Sonic comes out. Wholesome family entertainment. Probably barely any cursing and a true use of diversity in the show because you actually have uh, a wife and not only a black wife for the white main character uh, or the white hero in the show. Uh, the guy that, you know, the guy who ends up helping Sonic out. Anyway, he uh, not only is she a diverse character, but she's a supportive wife. She's a likable diverse character because in the very beginning of the show, she's you know she's she's trying to expect she's trying to cover all her bases and everything, but at the same time, uh, when he gets successful, she doesn't gripe at him about being a white man who's successful. She doesn't gripe at him about being a man that's successful. She tells him, look. You sacrificed so that I could have my veterinarian and I could get my college degree in veterinarian school. And yes, I will move to San Francisco with you because you are a sacrificial husband who has put his life on hold for this family. And if this is your dream of going to San Francisco and being a, a police officer in the big city, then I'm going to pick up everything and go with you. She was a very likable character. In fact, I kind of just looked at it and said, you know, that that is a relationship. That was like a real relationship right there. I just didn't give a shit about race at the moment because race was taken out of it. Well, Sonic goes in, whole, wholesome, helpful, wholesome show. Ends up making a whole lot of money, and now we've gone from Sonic is... Because when this all started and Sonic looked like it was going to overtake Birds of Prey, it was evil, it was racist, it was bigoted, it was homophobic. Now Sonic... Sonic... Sonic uh, should be LGBT. So what? what is this? Like, have we allied with the Nazis suddenly? Is, is that how they're going with it? No. What happens is, just like Meyer said, it's influence. They see this, they see the young audience that goes towards it, and they see a future voter that if they could influence them now while they're young, we could turn them into, we could probably start the turning of them into um, Sagan Seller. It's sort of like in, if you ever watched... Which one was it? I think it was Star Wars. Probably the end. Actually, no. Star Wars, uh, the Clone Wars to the Rise of the Sith. Or uh, Revenge of the Sith. Um, if you watch with Palpatine and Anakin, Palpatine very slowly turns Anakin to the dark side. It's a long, drawn-out process. It's the same thing with your kid and these progressive morons who want to push this absolute disgusting agenda half the time. Uh, they want something to go on with Sonic and Tails probably later in this um, deal. They're talking about Sonic and Tails. Sonic, let, let me give you an age difference here. Sonic is around 16, 17 probably. 
Tails is about eight. You can see the pedophilia that they want to push forward. Okay? <clears throat> it's not much better with Knuckles. Knuckles is just barely older than Sonic, I think. Um, but the problem that you're running in here is uh, these people see it's an agenda. They see your kids and they see Sonic as a means of pushing their agenda on your kids, pushing an LGBT agenda, which you may not want. Uh, I've honestly made this assumption. I said, you know, if you, when it comes down to the LGBT stuff, that is between a parent and their child. Okay. No one else should have the decision on when that is appropriate for the kid. Yeah. That is something specifically for the parent and to talk with their kid about when they feel their kid is ready. Hollywood don't believe that. If they could start putting gay juice into your kid at, at infancy, they would do it, all right? If they could put a drug inside of your kid that would that would flip them from being straight to gay, they would be pushing for it to be mandatory to all infants as soon as they are born, to start trickling it into their system. They're already doing this with um, the whole transse transsexual movement, trying to make kids transition you know, oh, well, well, my kid is trans, and they, they wanted it at like six or seven years old. We also had a, a recent uh, a recent court case where a mom tried to do that from what I believe was revenge against the father by trying to turn his boy into a girl. And I'm like, and a judge finally slapped that down and said, no, you're not doing that. You can't, you can't really prove this. No, you're not. There's no transitioning of this kid. But anyway, yeah, so it appears now that Sonic the Hedgehog is this wholesome movie that now has to be taken over. The Borg must assimilate. The geek culture must adapt to service PC culture. Um, you better resist or all, you better resist or lose it. Okay. It's people. And I, I've, I've watched yellow Flash's video on this and he said, Oh, uh, they'll never do this. Cause Sega bullshit. People said they would never take Virginia and look where you are now. People looked at my hero. People said Japan would never bend the knee anywhere. My hero Academia has bent the knee. All right. You do not say never. You just get off your ass and you start putting boots to ass, metaphorically, for your fandom. Remember, these fandoms are your country. Some people in the fandoms are dual citizens. Uh, some people are, like with Star Trek and Star Wars, they're dual citizens. They have no country anymore. The, the closest thing they've got is the sta like, uh, Star Wars. The closest thing that fans have to a country right now in their own fandom is the state of Mandalore. Okay? If you're not getting my metaphors, you'd, then you need to be looking at this a lot closer. To people out there that are normies that may watch this, that normally watch my channel, you wonder why the world's going nuts. It starts here. Everything starts at culture. Okay? Pop culture is just upstream. It, it's just... Down the way, it's right next to politics in the real world. This is propaganda they're trying to push into a movie that is not a propaganda movie. Go see Sonic the Hedgehog. It's an amazing movie you can take your kids to. Uh, one of the few things you can watch Jim Carrey in and say, damn, that guy's a good actor. I mean, despite all the, all the crap he's pulled, you just look back and say, man, Jim Carrey's a good actor. If you've ever been a fan of the series, I mean, he's he pulled off Robotnik amazingly. By the way, folks, uh, tell me what you think. Do you like? Do you not like this? How do you feel about the whole Puritans wanting to make Sonic the Hedgehog gay? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. I love hearing from those comments. I've also got a comment that I'm probably, if enough people give, if I can get enough likes on this and enough views, I may, I'm not going to go really major. I'm going to say probably about 15 views on this video. So if y'all could share it, and get me up to about 15 views. I will take this comment that I got from a fan that it's long-winded, but I would rather read it like it's an audiobook, okay? And do a video on it like it's an audiobook. Because it, it's pretty good compare it's pretty good uh relating to this. Uh, be sure to hit me with a like and a thumbs up, share the video. And uh if you're new to the channel, like, subscribe, uh, and hit that bell for notification. As usual, I am the last raider. Keep your head on a swivel. Stay frosty, folks, and I will see y'all in the next video.